So guys, I was cruising around Amazon.com the other day looking for a pair of machetes as a gift for my mother. And I noticed that the Amazon seller that had the machetes also had a bunch of other random stuff like memory foam, dog beds, router bits, and even an unbranded flying V guitar for $180? All right, guys, so you know that I cannot resist a $180 guitar. I saw this thing on Amazon recently. Like I said, it's an unbranded Flying V. Looks basically like a Flying V knockoff. I think it even has a set neck. I didn't see a brand name anywhere on the listing, but 180 bucks, I have to check it out. Now, of course, I, I did also get my, uh, my machetes. I think my mom is, is really gonna like these. I think I paid like, $19 for two. And yeah, like I said, the same seller that had the machetes also had this guitar right here. So anyway, let me uh, put these away. I want to wrap these back up uh, for when I give them to my mom. But let's go ahead and get this box open. Now, of course, I'm always being really careful these days. So I've got my protective unboxing gear. I've got my gauntlets and of course my protective face mask. I actually got a new uh, face mask recently because uh, the old one, apparently there's some other guy on YouTube, Souls something or somebody Souls, something like that, who had the same helmet and I didn't want to be confused for him. Weird problem to have, right? Matching medieval helmets. Anyway, I like this one a lot better here. It's got this flip up shield. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed here. All right. Ugh. <laughs> Strong winds, magic mist, to Asgard the Valkyries ride. All right, let's check it out. All right, so we're ready to go, and let's see, where's my, my box opener? Okay, now we're ready. Okay, so first of all, I gotta tell you guys, there's a little bit of a bend in this box, which is not something you want in a guitar box. So I'm really hoping that this thing is not just uh, snapped at the neck joint or something like that. Let's go ahead and slice it open here and see what we get. I gotta tell you, it's harder to see in this helmet than the old one. It's hard to believe that people used to actually fight in these things, you know, back in the 60s. I mean, the 1460s. All right, a few more cuts here ought to do it. Got that. A little bit more out here. There we go. Okay, I think we got it. Let's go ahead and put this away. Turn this thing over here and see if we can get it open. And as we look inside here, oh, there's another box. Okay, so it is double boxed. That's a good sign. And I think this box here, we can just lift this up and reveal the contents to the world. Okay, guys, so I do see a guitar in here. I think it's, uh, it looks pretty safe. So I'll go ahead and remove my safety gear and then we'll check out this guitar. Whew. I feel like I've been through a battle just opening that thing up. So this does appear to be a Flying V copy at first glance. Now there's a little, uh, you know, as you would expect, there's a cheap cable and looks like an Allen wrench to adjust the truss rod. And as packing jobs go, this is not too bad. I mean, it's not great. There's some loose foam kind of knocking around in here. Let's go ahead and get the guitar out of this uh, foam sack that it comes in. Let's just go ahead and rip this open. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at this thing here, guys. There you go. And it is, in fact, a set neck Flying V style guitar, I should say. Not a genuine Flying V, of course. 22 frets. Now, the frets look pretty nice, although... Uh, yeah, the ends are not that great. Um, 
There is, uh, you know, you can feel the edges of the frets pretty well. It's not terrible, but certainly they could be finished better. But again, guys, $180 for this. Now, of course, the, the big thing here is look at that headstock. Totally blank. I mean, this is such a pure knockoff of a Gibson Flying V. You know, the headstock shape is the same, certainly the body, and uh, almost the control layout is the same, not quite. But I think the company that made this probably didn't even want to put a brand name on it because they might get in trouble from Gibson. You know how touchy they are. But I gotta say, let's see here. Oh, not quite in tune, but that's okay. We'll tune it up. Yeah, I gotta say, this is looking pretty nice. It's a nice gloss black. I feel like the edge of the body is rounded off a little bit more than you would expect on a flying V, but in a way that might actually make it more comfortable. On the back, you've got the strap button there and some you know, generic tuners. Looks like, uh, I'll check this out when we plug it in, but I'm guessing we're going to have two tones in a single volume, uh, or it could be a master tone control. I'll, I'll figure it out in a second here. Three-way toggle switch and then the input down there. Stop tail bridge, of course, and, uh, you know, a couple of generic humbuckers. These look, uh, you know, they look pretty chintzy, to be honest. I'm not even sure. Probably not wax pot or anything. But again, we'll plug it in in just a second and listen to how it sounds. But overall, it looks pretty cool. I am a sucker for metal guitars and even the classic flying V shape. I love how these look. Also, guys, regarding the sharp fret ends, I mean, these are not, they're not super, super sharp. But I'm going to go ahead and play it, and I'm just going to check my index finger and see if I end up with any scratches on the side of my finger. That's always the dead giveaway for me. And if I do have that problem, there's a little trick I've used before. I've talked about it in other videos, but there's a trick I've used before where you use a foam sanding block, like the kind of sanding block that you would use for uh, furniture refinishing and things like that. You can just rub it down the edge of the fretboard and it usually takes care of sharp fret ends pretty easily. It's a quick cheap easy way to do it it's not perfect but if you have a cheap guitar like this it works pretty well all right guys but so far for 180 bucks i'm really digging this now guys we'll go ahead and plug this in and listen to how it sounds and then i'll give you some of my impressions of the playability and the tone and everything but real quick guys as always if you enjoy videos like this and you enjoy checking out cheap affordable guitars and you have not already subscribed please consider subscribing right now all right guys enough of that let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in
Okay, guys, so I gotta say, this was not as bad as I expected it to be. The, uh, the corners of the frets are a little bit, uh, you know, just not as smooth as they could be, but they're not really sharp, so it didn't end up scratching me or anything like that. Now, there are a few sort of cheap guitar things, like the fact that, uh, you know, I got the sort of black fingertips after playing this. I think that just has to do with some of the, you know, uh, packing oil and uh, just a little bit of dirt that was on the fretboard, but you could obviously polish the fretboard and clean all that stuff off. And even if you didn't do that, after you've played it a few times, you know, it all comes off on your fingers and, and then it's not a problem after that. Now the pickups are pretty low gain on this guitar. They, they don't have much uh, punch to them. Uh, they sounded surprisingly nice on the clean settings, uh, but you know, they just, it's not a real, uh, you know, definitely not hot pickups. And also, I can tell these are not wax potted, so it's gonna be fine for playing, you know, in your in your room at lower volumes, but if you take this out on a stage with a lot of, you know, high stage volume and a loud amplifier, you're gonna run into a lot of feedback problems with these pickups. Fortunately, because this has a pick guard on it, right, you can swap these out pretty easily. Also, guys, the control layout is two volumes and then a master tone. And of course you have the toggle switch. Now for the guitar itself, it's a basswood body and a maple neck and a nice rosewood fretboard. So pretty standard construction. It's a pretty standard weight for a Flying V style guitar. It's around eight pounds. And one thing that was actually a pleasant surprise, these tuners, even though these are, this is just a generic set of tuners, uh, they actually operate really smoothly and the guitar seems to hold its tune pretty well once you stretch the strings and everything. So overall for 180 bucks, I mean, this is pretty awesome. There are, like I said, some things that could be upgraded on it. It does need uh, some setup changes. I haven't done anything to the setup. I just tuned it and plugged it in. But the action is a little high. The action could be lowered a bit. And uh, actually, the truss rod is not too bad. But definitely, the pickups could be upgraded in this guitar. And that, that would be a nice upgrade to it. Maybe a little bit of extra finishing on the fret ends. But I think if you're looking for a Flying V guitar that you want to use as a project, something that you can upgrade as you go along. This is like a perfect choice for that. Now guys, I'm gonna put links down in the video description below where you can find this guitar, but please keep in mind, I have no idea how many of these guitars they have in stock or even who made this guitar. But you know, 180 bucks from Amazon, that's the magic of the internet. All right guys, so that's it for today. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put links below for where you can find the guitar. I will also put links down there for my new instructional video. It's the Guitar 1988 instructional video. I've got a 50% off link down there. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you soon.